up guys, it's your boy Endymion here with another theory video and this is one I've been thinking about a lot lately. Today is all about the mystery race of Andromeda, the Jardan. Warning, spoilers for the entire Mass Effect universe. To give a small summary, the Jardan are a race responsible for the terraforming technology of the Vaults, the Remnant, and the creators of the native species of Andromeda, the Angara. But what are the Jardan exactly? At first glance, the game doesn't seem to give us much to go on. But after delving deep, I think I have a pretty good explanation and understanding for who or what the Jardan are. It's confirmed that the Jardon created the Angara, but the purpose is shrouded in mystery. Looking at it from the perspective of the Jardon being a organic race, like humans for example, then the creation of another organic race would place them into a few categories. For one, they created the Angara as a slave race to work for them. Or two, they created the Angara as a progenitor race that would succeed the Jardon eventually, making the Angara a superior version to whatever the Jardon are currently. But here's my theory. What if the Jardon were not organic beings, but instead synthetic, as an AI, like the Geth? Let me explain. Looking at the Angaran race, we have a few characteristics and abilities native to the Angarans themselves. For example, the Asari have natural biotic abilities, Turians have powerful exteriors suited for harsh environments, and Krogans have quads. I'm not even going to explain that one for you. But the Angarans seem to have a control over bioelectrical fields, which allows the species to communicate with one another in a organic way, completely separate from radios or phones. They also have a genetic structure well suited to survive in harsh environments as well. It's also discovered by Ryder on Key to Sira that the Jardan not only created the Angara, but keep legions of Angaran bodies and stasis pods aboard Key to Sira. The more unsettling discovery, however, is that these Angaran bodies are fully developed, but they're not alive either. They are simply flesh bodies in stasis, with that seemingly seems to be a lack of a spark to bring them alive, or a soul, for example. But the biggest clue we have lies in what happens to Angaras when they finally die. In Angaran culture, it is believed that when an Angaran dies, their souls enter a state of reincarnation, where they are born again with the talents, or sometimes even memories, of who they were before. There's even a mission on Havaro, the home world of the Angara, where Ryder finds a resistance leader who leads Ryder and company to a remnant vault that he's never been to in his life. Not only can this Angara Angara resistance leader find his way and know where the trigger points to activate the remnant vault are, but there's also an unsettling discovery when the resistance leader discovers the remains of an Angaran female archaeologist who he shares the same memories with. It's revealed that the male resistance leader was this female archaeologist in a past life, and everything he knew about the vault was because he had lived it before in a previous life. This essentially confirms that reincarnation, to some degree, is a real tangible concept that the Angaran people have access to. So why is this important to the Jardan, you may be asking? Well, based on the information above, I believe that the Jardan are a synthetic race of scientists that created the Angaran race and the Remnant Vaults in order to further understand organic life and eventually, through experiments and tests, they would create the final form of evolution. As we're told in Mass Effect 3's ending by the intelligence, the AI that created the Reapers, the intelligence says plainly that synthesis, the melding of organic and synthetic life to be the ultimate end goal of evolution. Once both opposing forces are to become one, then conflict, death, and chaos can finally, theoretically, end. I think that the Angaran bodies lie dormant because the soul these host bodies lack are that synthetic spark that the Jardan are essentially that is inserted into the Angaran race in order for it to, well, exist really. And when this 
Jardon synthetic soul inside the organic Angaran body dies. The Jardon synthetic soul in this case, acting almost like a USB drive if you will, leaves the dead Angaran and reincarnates itself into a new Angaran body and the Jardon AI is able to then live again in a new host body, further living and experiencing life in a organic way so that the Jardon scientific curiosities and testing can further be examined and explored. It would explain why Angarans can reincarnate, because the Jardon AI is simply entering a new body with the improvements from a past life and utilizing those improvements and information in order to create a better second life or a third or even a fourth, and so on. Think of it like upgrading a computer or buying a new phone. If you transfer your old contacts, notes, or photos from a older, less technologically advanced piece of hardware into a new one, the things that are important are retained while existing in a new, better phone, or Angara in this case. It would also explain the bioelectric field ability allowing for organic forms of communication. The bioelectric field is being created and amplified by the AI synthetic soul within each Angara, allowing the Jardin to further fine tune and upgrade these organic synthetic synthesis abilities. Even when looking at the remnant vaults, to the Andromeda Initiative, it's seen as a godsend because it's a terraforming network that allows someone to create environments on planets perfectly suited to whatever life at that moment needs. These remnant vaults, this terraforming network the Jardin have created, could be nothing more than a massive experiment, a beta testing ground if you will. The Jardin could take the Angaran host bodies from Key to Sira, activate them like you would a SIM card into a phone for example, place these organic bodies with synthetic souls into a test environment, which the Jardon then use the remnant vaults to simulate whatever environment they need for the current cycle or experiment, and once they get the relevant data they need, they simply use Meridian, the home base for this terraforming network, to wipe a planet clean of whatever life was used in that cycle or experiment, grow new Angaran bodies, or reincarnate as the Angaras say, create a new simulated environment, maybe this time they test Angaran physiology on say a cold planet planet like Volt. Or how does a organic synthetic life form perform in extreme heat? Well that's why Elodin was the way it was and where the Krogan created new Tuchanka if you don't remember. All of this experimentation and beta testing would allow the Jardon as a race to fine tune and adapt their synthesis experiment eventually to a point where the Jardon could, in theory, create the ultimate apex tier of synthesis in a life form, the perfect blend of organic and synthetic life, synthesis as the intelligence would say. So why don't the Angarans remember any of this? It's simply because their souls are synthetic, a data core that could be reset by the Jardon and Meridian in order to keep the experiments as believable and truthful as possible. The Angaran race also has a much higher sensitivity to the emotional spectrum, which on one hand you could see as the Angarans are just an emotional race, but on the the other hand, that would be a convenient design choice by the Jardon so that they, as a synthetic life form, could better understand the wide range of the emotional spectrum that organic life is capable of. Same goes with Angarans and their tendency to have large families and live together. On one hand, maybe Angara just like being with family. Or the Jardon, since synthetic life has no concept of what family or what a father, grandmother, or child is in their sense, again, made this as a behavioral instinctual design decision so that they as synthetic life could better understand a concept deeply embedded into basically all organic life, the concept of family and generational existence. So then begs the question, if the Jardon created the Angara, who then created the Jardon? Perhaps the Angaran physiology and such is based on the extinct race that created the Jardon. And maybe after eons and eons of time passing, the Jardon sought to understand their creators and the cycles of true organic life and use their creator's genetic material to create a prototype body. And then after realizing they needed to create a sustainable environment for these prototypes, hence Meridian, Ketis, 
Viscera and the Remnant Vault. And to bring this whole theory full circle, to put the cherry on top of it all, to convince you that what I'm saying isn't total insanity, is how the Jargon technology like the Remnant is controlled. If the Angarans, who have shown to some degree to be able to control Remnant tech by simply being themselves, because they are a result of synthesis, we only need to look at, well, you. And by you, I mean Ryder. The Archon throughout Andromeda's story cannot control the Remnant or Meridian until he eventually captures Ryder's twin. But Ryder can, and it's clear to see now, with all this information now in front of you, Ryder, a organic life form, is synthesized, in a sense, with Sam, the synthetic life form. And because Ryder and Sam display that final evolutionary step in synthesis, that's why Ryder is able to control the Remnant Vaults, Meridian and understand the Jardon's language and use the vault to create a home for the Andromeda Initiative. Because through experimentation and trial and error, as you run and drive and dash across each playable planet in-game, Sam is learning like the Jardon are with the Angara, through interfacing and experiencing the concepts and ways of organic life through you, or Ryder in this sense. Am I on to something here? Does this all make sense? Am I crazy? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments below. I think I am pretty confident in saying that I am most likely spot on for the most part as to what the Jardon are, and I hope this video helped you understand my crazy theory here. If you like Mass Effect like I do, and RPG stuff in general. Please like, comment, and subscribe to help a new YouTuber out. It would mean a lot. I put a lot of time into making this, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helped you understand what the Jardon really are. Or maybe I'm wrong, and the Jardon are just a race of clones of Will Smith waiting to overtake all of existence. That's always a possibility too. Well guys, thanks for watching. I'm Endymion. Have any other topics you want me to cover? Put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.